hi everybody, it's Jackie schomburg Minen. Uh, for those of you who are getting ready for the holiday season, take a load off, sit back, relax. Uh, I'm doing an abstract landscape today with a bunch of collage paper and paint and here I'm just sealing my panels with gloss medium just to make sure that they are all set and ready to go. And I typically work in series larger than two. However, for the purposes of today, I just used two of these cradled wood panels. These are 12 by 12s. I tend to have a surplus of 12 by 12s. Um, I used some, what did I use that pencil? That is a uh, Faber-Castell graphic, graphite aquarelle pencil. I expected it to uh, impact the white that I was about to paint over it more than it did. So not sure if the gloss medium sealed around it somehow, or if I was just putting the white on very thick so it didn't pick it up. Either way, it's there. It still helped me activate the, the panel as it were. And here I'm using a wood, uh, I guess you could just call it like a skewer to carve into the paint layer. Just making marks uh, that probably won't be seen, you never know. And that is my catalyst wedge. Just taking some of the paint off to create some variety. I'm not thinking about composition yet. I'm just making some marks. Because the layer of paint that I put on was fairly thick, I did use the hairdryer to dry things a bit. But then quickly stopped when I realized I wanted to add some Neocolor Crayon. I wanted to make sure that the white was set before I added other colors so that I didn't make everything into a big pastel. Again, that'd be fine if that's your color scheme. That wasn't what I was looking for today. And of course, the thicker you apply the paint, the longer it takes to dry. Don't be fooled when the top layer feels dry. Keep going until you feel like the whole, it's dry all the way down. I've made that mistake more than once. I set out to create landscapes here. Um, I wanted to just set my horizon line and I wanted it to be different in each of the panels. I'm applying gloss medium here because I want to have it be a clean edge when I take the tape off. If you don't put gloss medium or matte medium or something to seal that tape edge, you'll get a lot of bleed through. Again, I've learned that lesson more than once also. This is some Payne's Gray. Thought I'd start out dark. A little bit of water splatter. I use Payne's Gray. I mean, it's basically navy blue in my, in my mind. So I really enjoy using it. This is my, hmm, what do I do next phase? Total obliteration. <laughs> Let's paint the whole uh, bottom section black and build from there. When I started these two designs, I started with no plan in mind other than I wanted it to be a general landscape 
not even meaning resembling anything out in the landscape, but just that I wanted to have kind of a horizon line and that would be the focal point or the focus of the, the panels. One of my children dumped my tiny scrap box into my regular scrap box. So, so I've got, uh, I don't know, I'll never find the small scraps until I reorganize that, but it's okay. Maybe it's forcing me out of my comfort zone to just use different pieces than I normally would. And everything I'm doing here is, I mean, basically improvised. I'm, I had no plan of what colors to use or what color of the papers to use. Obviously I chose blue as the color on my panel. And it is nice when you're doing something that has mainly two colors in it, if you want it to make a big impact, you can use the complementary colors. So whatever's across from it on the color wheel. So for blue, that's orange. For purple, it's yellow. And for green, it's red. I'm going for a blue, orangey, yellow, gold situation here. I never in a million years thought I would be using this gold paper as much as I have. I used it to take off some of the excess gold paint that I put on a canvas. Or on, I don't even know what it was, a canvas. On something a couple weeks ago. And I've been using all of that as collage paper ever since. Now, the only thing I know is that I will be adding white to the bottom portion. So I'm thinking through what things, what paper scraps would fade well into white. Thus, some of that's the white butcher paper that I keep on top of my desk that holds the extra paint that comes off my projects. Just a reminder, if you change your mind fast enough, you can still move your collage pieces around. So the left side, as I continue to build it up, is really exciting because it's really taking on some cool shapes and colors and I really like the whole vibe of what's happening on the left side. The right side seems very plain to me. So I'm looking at ways to spruce it up, but I didn't leave myself a whole lot of room at the top. When I wanted to add white, I didn't want to add just plain white. So I added a tiny bit of yellow ochre just to make it a little bit creamy. And I'm applying it with an old credit card. It's actually a hotel key. So I'm using a, a wipe or a wet paper towel here just to pull back and see what it looks like if I distressed it a bit. Short answer, it looks very messy. If you try to take it off too soon, all the paint will come off. If you wait too long, none of the paint will come off. So there is some sort of perfect balance. So the left side, uh, I loved 
how it turned out. But that side felt like magic. The right side felt messy. So you never really know what's going to happen when you set out <laughs> to experiment. It might work really well on one side and not the other. So if it doesn't work one way, don't write off the entire process. Keep experimenting because I didn't do anything different in my mind between the two. To me, it felt like exactly the same process, but it turned out very differently. I was just using a palette knife to scrape in some vertical and horizontal lines. They don't show up and they didn't show up in person either, but they're there. And if you look very closely, you can see them. I switched to a brayer so that I could apply a thin layer and it would be a little bit of that distressed look, but I could just keep applying a thin layer after a thin layer. And as I keep building it up, I'm liking the right side more and more again. It's hard to see, but on the right panel, the bottom, that big kind of scratchy looking section actually has some pretty big, how would I describe it? Those are the marks that I put into wet paint using a Neocolor crayon. So they're, it's very textured and you can follow where the crayon marks go. It's like a big crayon scribble. But because it's a couple layers deep now, it looks very sophisticated. <laughs> and this is a knitting needle I'm using to scrape in to that new paint. I love how in the top section, those water droplets I did very early in this process show up now like stars in the night sky. I assumed I'd be coloring over those, but I never did because I really liked them. I'm just doing a glaze of quinacridone gold here just to warm things up a bit. And now I'm adding some gold. And this is metallic gold, so depending on the angle, it's almost invisible and then it's very shiny. And I'm just playing up the gold collage piece that was already there, making it a little bit more luminous. All right, so this I really enjoyed. This I'm taking the Neocolor 2 crayons, which are water soluble. I'm painting over them with gloss medium, and then I'm using my catalyst wedge to pull the color down. Or up, as that last one is. So it's almost like reflection. I guess it is like reflection, but I'm not sure exactly what it's reflecting into. Maybe it's snow on the ground. I don't know what it is. But I like how it's being absorbed into the landscape around it. Those colors at the top. And the gold radiating into the night sky, or what I'm calling the night sky, I really love it. I don't, you know, as far as nature goes, I can't explain the phenomenon. But in this little world, I'm really enjoying the effect. Like that gold is so shiny that it can't help but 
add in to again the landscape around it. Now the one on the right I'm really, really happy with. So I'm just fine tuning things a bit. Seeing if there are little details I can add that would add value. The one area that I'm not loving is you can see the red square with the cutout and the, the cutout circle in the middle on the right, yeah, on the far right side. The blue shape that's behind that, I'm not loving. It's just a flat blue. There's no texture, there's no detail, there's, it's just one color. And having those both be pretty flat colors is driving me crazy. And on the left side, part of it's feeling very plain. So I'm trying to figure out how to make it less plain, but not overly, not adding something just to add something. Adding something that would make sense. And I mean, make sense very loosely not make sense in the actual world, but make sense in my little art world here. So I'm adding the tiniest bit now of yellow ochre to create basically a white that just leans a teeny bit warm. And going back to my brayer so I can add some highlights here. When I wipe it off with the paper towels, it's kind of a misty effect. Just a thin, thin layer. Doing 10 thin layers instead of one thick layer really gives you a lot of depth because you really have a lot of control over where you have the, the more opacity and where it's more translucent. So I'm pretty far along in this process now of what I'm enjoying about these pieces. And now it really comes down to little bits of what can I use to make this better? What's lacking? What can I add? On the left side, It was so plain and I found this magical scrap of butcher paper from my desk and I just went for it. Basically covered over 40% of what I have already done. But I love it and I feel like it adds so much to this, to the horizon line. There's so much more depth in it now. That's one of those things that you could never like design a piece, well, I couldn't, to fit there. It just happened to work. I'm trying to figure out how to solve for that blue. Do I cover over it? Do I knock the whole piece back? And then I realized I didn't really, it wasn't the color I didn't like. And it wasn't the placement I didn't like. It was really just the how plain it was.
some pencil marks. Pencil over gloss medium doesn't show up very well for the most part. But I was able to get some marks in. But it was not anything substantial. Then I decided I would take the Neocolor crayon and just scribble over it. I thought I would use it and then do the gloss medium again and pull it down with the catalyst wedge again. But I really liked the scribbling because it solved the problem of things being too plain. And this is a tiny W that came out of my catalyst wedge. Uh, kind of carved into the silicone it says W-06 and this little W perfect little W shape popped out with black paint on it and I messed around with this for way too long trying to find a place for it and I have not yet glued it down so if I do I'll, I'll let you know on Instagram I'll put an update but this is how these ended up and the more I look at them the more I really like them as they are I may do a little bit more enhancing on the left one, but this is how it ended up. So let me know in the comments, um, how do you start your landscapes? Do you do the same general steps that I use? Do you do something different? I would love to hear. And also as the holidays come around, please make sure you're still paying attention to your own creativity. Things get super busy and Making art's usually the first thing to go, but I would encourage you to not let it go completely. So if you're looking for a quick way to keep creativity in your daily schedule, I do have a free guide for how to use grid journals to make simple, quick art. If you go to jackieschomburg.com slash grid, or use this QR code here, uh, it will take you right to the page for a free guide. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I would love to have you receive my new videos every Sunday morning. Bye, everybody.